Hello everybody, my name is Patrick. I recently joined Bloomin Native as the technical officer. Today we're going to be having a little bit of a tour around the offices here to show what we've been doing to uh, promote biodiversity. First of all, we're going to start here outside the reception and uh, we're looking here at these beds here. So these beds used to be planted with, uh, with uh, bedding plants, but bedding plants aren't a particularly good plant for uh, pollinators as they contain very little nectar. So instead this year in this bed, we have all purple cornflower. Now it's not in flower at the moment, but purple cornflower, when, it, when it's in flower, you're going to get a very vibrant, very vivid blue. It's a great plant for, for bees and insects as it's a very high nectar plant. It's also a very useful plant for uh, birds as it, when, when, it, when the flower is gone, some nice seed heads develop that the birds can pluck off. Later on, we're going to take a look at an old paddock that we've reseeded and another area that we're now cur currently developing on. This is the second area that we're going to be taking a look at. So this is an old unused paddock which was sown last year with the year after year mix. The year after year mix contains annuals and perennials. So last year the annuals would have come up, this year it's the perennials. So as you can see there's a lot of uh, the oxide daisy in it at the moment. Next year this will look completely different again as some of the other the perennials start to gain strength and they push themselves up as well. This is the rest of the paddock that we've sown with the annual pollinator seed mix. Now, as you can see, we've got a good few plants coming up here at the moment. However, they're not as, they're not as far ahead as we have expected at this time of the year. April was very cold, very dry. The plants didn't germinate as fast as we would have expected. Now, we would have, I would expect that within the next few weeks, we will see an awful lot more growth as ground heats up and maybe if we get a little bit more moisture. So when we check back here and later on the summer, we should see a good amount of color in this, in this paddock especially because they're annuals. Annuals are the most vibrant of the, of the plants that you can, of the seeds that you can sow. So we're on our way down to the third area, but we thought we'd just stop and take a look at these poppies. These are wild poppies. They pop up all over the place around here. The reason being is that their seeds can remain viable in the soil for many, many years. Now, let's move on. We'll head on down to the other area and we'll see what's happening down there. So here we are at the third area. As you can hear in the background, we're doing a bit of developing here and we've decided to turn this wasteland here into a pollinator uh, habitat. This was sown with the uh, bee and butterfly mix and a bit of grass. So the bee and butterfly mix is a high nectar mix, which would be great for pollinators and the grass will be great for certain caterpillars, which will feed and uh, pupate on them. As you can see, uh, they're still quite small. As mentioned earlier, the, the spring has set everything back. But over the next few weeks, we'll be, ex be expecting that this is going to burst into colour and basically become a pollinator wonderland. So thank you for listening. I uh, would love to hear what you think in the comments. We'll be keeping you updated over the next few weeks and we'll talk to you again.